Hey, hold on a second. It was, I think I saw Fredette West, the yes. legendary staffer on from the Black Caucus. Is that Fredette West? I saw her as well. She yeah, was a, yeah. She 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 knows campaign. She's an expert. Okay. She's a, and she's a big yeah. uh, big advantage to have her in anything that you're doing. She she was okay. senior advisor to the Congressional Black Caucus for years. So I just want to make sure we give her a shout out. Yep. She on? Yeah, I yep. saw her. She, she's right there. Yeah, because okay. for that someone, I, I think we would want to call on at some point. Yeah. Okay. All right, you guys. Um, let's start. Um, uh, this is our 14th. You can start recording. This is our 14th amazing 90-minute uh, Zoom call for the Grassroots Emergency Election Protection Coalition. And we are in the middle of a national crisis beyond any of our imaginings. If I as a historian wrote historical fiction describing what's happening in the United States today, I don't think anybody would believe it. The point of the, the call, as all our calls has been, is to um, uh, get to the bottom of protecting the upcoming election, make sure it has some form, some semblance of democracy to it. And the closer we get to the election, the more chaotic it gets to be. We have a trifecta we deal with, which is the voter registration rolls, vote by mail, and the counting of the ballots, all of which are under attack. And our strategy is very simple. We have acknowledged that there, this is not a national election. It's 50 separate states, each of them with their own laws, and each of them with counties that are having wide range of, of, of procedures and practices that are going to make it extremely challenging to deal with this election. We have, we, we have state coordinators, we're building, uh, we have some already and we're building what we hope will be a national network of state coordinators who know all the laws of all the state um, elections so that we have people we can go to. But the core of the uh, uh, campaign is people at the grassroots in each county. And we're hoping more and more that people get embedded in their local county election boards so that we can uh, uh, have some kind of uh, control um, and accountability in how this election is gonna be handled. Uh, we have someone in the White House who's been talking about postponing or canceling the election. Uh, he got pretty bad, pretty rapid feedback on that. The real threat is not the postponement or the cancellation of the election. The real threat is the disruption and theft of the election. I mean, by, by not allowing people to vote and by, making, and not, by having those votes not count. And that, that is our goal is to protect that. We have 90 minutes today and we have 90 days to the election. It's hard to believe, but not, 90 days is it folks, three months, uh, uh, basically from the third and um, um, it couldn't be more, it couldn't be more challenging what we're facing. So our grassroots approach is very clear and we are now in it. We've had 13 calls basically exploring the mechanics of this election. I am in the process. I am almost done uh, with a uh, election protection guidebook or handbook. It's about 20 pages. I have, uh, it's been sent to all of you. It's in a PDF form and I am about a halfway through a final draft. Anybody who has any comments on this handbook, please look at it and send them to me at solartopia at gmail.com. But this week I will take all your comments, all your corrections and, and um, as suggestions, email them to me. If you don't have a copy of this thing that came with the invitation, email me afterwards, I'll send it to you. Please read it and send me comments as soon as possible. At our next meeting, which will be a week from today, uh, I will have a finished proof and we can send it to everybody. It'll be in PDF form and maybe we'll get it printed. I'm not sure there's a reason to do that. It will have a lot of links if you want to send me links. Um, Steve Rosenfeld has had the great experience of doing handbooks before, so I'll be asking for, he's already given me good feedback and uh, I've gotten good feedback from Deborah Cohn um, uh, um, um, and Jennifer Tanner and other people. So I need all the feedback I can get this coming week and it will be 
a document will be in progress, but the one I'll do for next week will be uh, ready to go. So email me, please. Don't, don't just put me a note uh, on the bottom of this. Now, um, one other thing, we are gonna get in with Joel Siegel and with John Brakey to discuss the nitty gritty of the organizing, the incredible organizing that's already going on in North Carolina and Arizona. We are then, and then, then we'll have a Q and A for those two because they have really jumped us to where we need to be in terms of grassroots organization and impact. Uh, we'll have a Q and A with them, and then Bob Fatrakis um, and um, Joel. What's the woman's name? Pennsylvania. I don't see her on the list yet. Uh, Anita Prizio. Anita Prizio. She, Allegheny just, City Council. We're going to talk to them about the incredibly um, um, arcane and difficult situations we face with actually even getting ballots in Ohio and Pennsylvania. I mean, it's, it's staggering uh, what, what's going on there. So that is going to be the basic uh, 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 structure of the call. I am going to give one minute right now to Gary Crane because people have asked me about this. There are people who are talking about uh, uh, the possibility that um, the guy in the White House, who I never call president, will not vacate if he loses the election. And there are people, I've, just in a, I've already been on a couple calls about this, who want to set up, do civil disobedience and prepare for that uh, contingency. That is not the focus of these calls. But um, uh, uh, you are setting up um, uh, a website and a, a Zoom call, Gary Crane, if you'll give us one minute on, on what, how people can contact you to discuss that issue. Nonviolent resistance after uh, the election, that would be great. Go Thank ahead, you, Gary. Harvey. Thanks so much. Uh, so I just posted in the chat um, a Zoom meeting Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. And if that doesn't fit people's schedules, they can email me, uh, Gary at getcouragenow.org with uh, what times they would prefer on Saturday. Two choices. Uh, it's also really important for you to, anyone interested in uh, looking at a nonviolent civil resistance strategy to be able to give me a signal uh, contact because this is a confidential document and if you use telegram uh, one of the main protagonists um, in the great hack told me the FBI has already figured out how to hack telegram so please uh, join signal it's free and uh, with your cell number <clears throat> and then uh, send me a note and I'll send you the confidential document that will be kind of our basis for brainstorming the purpose of the meeting will be basically to get your criticism uh, ways to improve the strategy, and most importantly, how we can get this to uh, major players at mobilize.us and other major platforms that uh, literally 2,000 different campaigns, including the, the federal campaigns, are using. Uh, okay. So they can just take these ideas and put them into their existing apps to reach millions of people. Okay, so thank you, uh, Gary. Much appreciated. That's for dealing with after the election, we're dealing with before the election uh, or during the election, uh, and then after the election for the vote count. Um, anyone who wants to contact Gary about possible civil disobedience, nonviolence, after the election, he has posted his links uh, in the chat and, and go ahead. Okay, thank you very much, Gary. We appreciate that and we appreciate your effort. Okay. As, our, as we proceed now, our agenda is deeper in the civil, the civil organization of state by state to protect this election, to make people, make sure people get a ballot, and that their ballot gets received, and that those ballots are counted. So uh, we're going to, Joel Siegel, my co-convener, I'm going to turn it over to you. Uh, you're doing incredible work in North Carolina. You have people on the call with you. So tell us, please, what you're doing and what your game plan is to protect the vote in, in North Carolina. Uh, thank you, Hart. First of all, I want to thank you for your leadership on voter suppression all these years. Joel? Uh, yeah. Hello? Joel Siegel? I'm here. Oh, come on. Hello, hello? 
Yeah, I can hear you, Joel. Can Harvey, you, you, you can't hear Joel? Yeah. I, Harvey was going in and out for a while. Yeah, Harvey, you might want to close every application that you have running on your device other than Zoom because you might be giving yourself a little uh, performance. Uh, no, I, 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 could be, I could be heard by everyone else, right? I can Not hear head. you. Oh, yep. look at those head nodding. All right. Yep. <laughs> All that power I have. <laughs> my head already. Uh, Harvey, can you hear me? Let's, let's wait, Mike, till we get Harvey, since he's moderating. I'm going to stop Harvey's video and see if that helps, because okay. sometimes Joel? that puts... All right, can everybody hear me? Yep. Yep. Uh, I'm right. Harvey, I'm going to go ahead and, and talk. Is that okay? I, I think we have Trump is trying to <laughs> stop us. They don't like us talking about the uh, hacking into the uh, well, supposedly it, it's private the solid, communications. It's the solidarity that we actually have among progressives that's not always typical. So maybe trying to stop that. Uh, so just go ahead, Joel. Oh, we'll, should I go ahead? Yeah, okay. We'll brief Harvey. So, first everything. of all, um, I want to thank Mike Hirsch, uh, Communications Director for Progressive Democrats of America, my longtime co-conspirator when I worked for Congressman John Conyers. And... Uh, we actually, Representative Conyers actually organized the first voter suppression. Um, I remember Robert Petrakis was a part of that, I believe. Uh, that was in 204 when the Ohio vote uh, was literally stolen when Kerry was running. And, and what we found out during the congressional hearing was the Republican Party just took thousands of votes and threw them in dipsy dumpsters. And the reason why I'm saying that is we don't, we don't want that to happen again. And if people think that you know Trump is down the polls and Biden is going to win, and Democrats going to win, I, I would really challenge that paradigm because it's it's a, it's a false paradigm. Um, we know that in New York, which is a Democratic stronghold, the election has been a disaster. Evelyn Maven Hall from New York. Um, they're still counting absentee ballots, right, Evelyn? And um, that kind of strange that they're still counting the ballots. So. There is a problem with competency and then voting in the time of COVID-19. This is a whole new you know, um, way to, to actually count votes during an election. Georgia, seven to eight hour waiting lines. Um, DeKalb County especially was a total disaster. The uh, staff who were working on the polls did not know how to work the machines. Um, Wisconsin, people actually died in line. I know they were infected, is that correct, they died? So we're, we're talking about um, a nation now that's in crisis, not with only who's in office, but we're not prepared for an election during the time of COVID. Our job is to actually, on, in every swing state, is come up with an a, a election protection, a coalition of conscience. And what we're going to do today is I'm going to call on a few people who are part of our coalition. If I had to choose a dream team, remember the dream team that won the Olympics? Remember that, Michael Jordan and magic. This is the dream team. Many of these people have way more experience than I do. And having worked in elections for, you know, literally decades, um, and I'm going to be calling on them. We're going to go over our action plan. If, if you don't know where North Carolina is, I'll just remind you who we are. That's my, you might remember that guy, Michael Jordan. <laughs> um, that, <laughs> I, I just want to remind everybody who we are. Michael Jordan is from North Carolina, Wilmington. He's that guy, I know he's unknown to most of you, that won more championships from the Chicago Bulls than anybody. That, he, he went to my law school, no, college. But I just wanna make sure everyone knows who we are, okay? That's where we're from, we're from North Carolina. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna call on Charles Stevenson, Wake County. He's a former senior legislative assistant to Representative Ron Dellums. As a 30 year old, he was my mentor. Uh, I said, I think I wanna work in Congress because he was so cool. He used to wear an earring and was um, really into um, music back there. But he, he really has excellent ideas on what we need to do in terms of action steps if we're going to build these coalitions. We have to do them rapidly because we don't have much time. Charles Stevens, the floor is yours. Well, good evening. Can everybody, everyone hear me? Yes. Can you, okay. Well, first of all, I, I still wear the earring, uh, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, me, me, me too. I still wear the earring. And then I want to say, I want to welcome, we got Fredette West on the call. I want to say hi to her and we give a shout out to, to Fredette. I look, I, I did speak last week, Joe. I think that uh, 
you were in a meeting. So I don't want to take up too much time. But what I do want to emphasize, again, as you mentioned, action. I mean, what, what are we going to do? And so far, what, we've, what we have done, we've reached out to some of the organizations that we know are working on all levels of voter protection, voter registration, voter suppression, such as Blueprint, um, and I understand like ACLU, uh, Common Cause, Democracy NC. So we reached out to them. And what we need to do, uh, hopefully this week sometime, is convene uh, our colleagues on this call who are from North Carolina. So we get a sense of what areas you're concentrating on so that we're not stepping on each other's toes. So that's one thing I want to put out there, Joel, is that uh, you could convene a call with uh, all our colleagues who are from North Carolina so we can begin to discuss what some of these groups are doing. Um, they are very much in, in, involved. But as I reported last week, the North Carolina Democratic Party has a very ambitious uh, agenda in reference to voter suppression, voter registration, get out the vote. Um, very, very uh, ambitious. Uh, again, they're looking for poll greeters in and outside the poll. They're looking for, for they're still looking for volunteers, legal volunteers, demand the polls, both uh, early voting and on election day. Uh, our, our job, I see it, is to see how we can supplement whatever these other groups are doing and whatever the Democratic Party is doing. And I think, again, our first step, Joel, is to put together a call where we can all talk together, see what we know, and then uh, again, reach out to some of these other groups and see how we can best uh, facilitate and help in terms of cooperation, what they're doing. Well, so I'm I feel nickname, very good about that. I'm gonna nickname you the architect. And, um, no, 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 don't, don't do that. But thank uh, you, so thank you, Charles. The, I mean, we are, uh, we are but what we're asking- And I also wanna give a shout out, so we got Willie Fleming, got Willie on the call, as you know, Willie Fleming is the, the past chair of the African American, of the, uh, he's a, the chair, the past chair, African American caucus of North Carolina Democratic Party. And he's done a great job in North Carolina over the years. So uh, welcome to the call, Willie. Well, that, that's a nice segue. Um, Willie is part of our election protection coalition here in North Carolina. So Willie, uh, just to tell you who he is, he is the uh, president of the International Minority Coalition which is the largest international minority coalition in our in the city of Charlotte. We have over two million, and you know, in the city, and the Democratic Party, before Willie and Colette started organizing, was it was predominantly white, and there were some African Americans, but it was, in my opinion, it was not international. And if we're going to win this election, oh, I'm sorry, we're supposed to be nonpartisan. If we're going to make sure that we get the vote out. We have to remember we have East Indians, Asians, Pacific Americans, Hispanics, and often I find the Democratic Party often forgets that the Rainbow Coalition is not just a name, and we are putting that into action through Willie. So Willie, if you could introduce yourself and tell us you know, what, what we plan on doing with the coalition, in particular with the international uh, uh, minority community. Floor is yours. Don't be shy, Willie, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, he's not shy. All no, right. Willie's not shy. Is Willie, we've got Willie? Willie? Yeah, I don't I see mean, Willie on the on the list of people who are here. Oh, uh, he's not there? No. Okay. He was, he, okay. He was All right, so Colette Alston. You... Yeah, I got it. I'll take it, Harvey. Colette Alston. Right. I got it, Harvey. Colette, tell us what... Um, Tell us what you're doing in terms of the uh, involvement um, of the uh, African American Caucus. We're going to call on your colleague in a second, but tell us about, you know, what what do we need to do uh, in North Carolina to make sure we safeguard our election? Uh, first things first, and that is um, organizing precincts, and so that's going to go for any party that's on this call. At the end of the day, if um, you're in areas that don't get the vote out and actually understand what the vote means then um, we're, we're in a precarious situation. So the main thing is making sure that we have people involved in the process and then also um, educating people on the process of voting and also understanding who all is purged here in North Carolina. Um, and with that, you know, I'm speaking from the perspective of being in Mecklenburg County, 
which is the Charlotte area for those of you that are uh, not here in North Carolina, but um, our president of the state African-American caucus for North Carolina is on as well. And we're working on something that will actually penetrate every county in North Carolina to involve and expand the black vote. So with that, I'm going to diverge to uh, President Valetta Donnell. Thank you, Colette. President of the African American Caucus, Ms. Darnell, the floor is yours. What do we? What should we need? What? Let's talk a little bit about our action plan. And, and we haven't finished the action plan, but we'll be close by the end of the week because you just can't like spring an action plan on people. It has to be democratically decided. Uh, but, um, Ms. Darnell, can you talk a little bit about the African American Caucus and you know what you do and where you are and what's what's what what do we need to do to safeguard this election? The floor is yours. Hmm. I think she's still muted, um, Joel. Okay. Mike, can you unmute her? Who? What's the name? And Joel, you can unmute people too. Oh, You're God. a co-host. Uh, man, I'm not. I'm not real good at that. Colette, you want to try again? Let's introduce. Who are we uh, trying to get? The president of the. Um, well, it's the president of the North Carolina African American Caucus. What, but what's her name? What, what? No, I need to know the name. Because her, her credentials aren't in the uh, in the uh, roster here. So it's, Colette, you, can you introduce your president? She's unmuted. No, she's not. She said her name is Felita Donnell. For, well, it's Felita Darnell. Yeah. Okay, guys, we got to got to get the name to to know who we're dealing no, with. No, wait. So. It's F E L I T A uh, Donnell. Felita Darnell. Here she is. Think, okay. We're Sorry about that. Problem. Yeah, Look, that's okay. We're gonna we're gonna get it done. This we have a very important country to save, so I don't think we need to rush this. We we're saving our democracy, so let's not rush this. Please take your time when you speak. This Hello, everybody, and well. and thanks for unmute, unmuting me. <laughs> but as Colette said earlier, the African American Caucus of the North Carolina Democratic Party is uh, working on a plan to that involves precinct organization and um, voter education. So we hope to roll that out no later than the end of the month. And as you know, precinct organization is um, an ongoing thing throughout the year, but the Democratic Party has what they call a precinct organization period, which is, you know, usually in starts in Feb February. So uh, the purpose of that is to engage voters and, and educate them to the entire process other than voting in November, because it's, it, it's bigger than voting in November, and you should vote in November. But it's just so many other things that take place prior to and during the entire year. So we're working on that. And I'm going to go into, when, when we conclude, I am going to go into a, a summary of our plan just so it's clear what we are doing. I just want to make sure that everybody knows that we're a for real coalition, but also we want to be a template to other states. So if there's a Black Caucus coalition in your state, you, of course, want to get in touch with them. Um, why don't we hear from Donna Marie Woodson, Mecklenburg County Democratic Party, Alliance of Moral Progressives, and my, my dear friend. And you can, if you can talk about what we need to do on the day of the election to protect the vote, and then any ideas that you have, Don Marie, in terms of um, voter education and what you're working on with our coalition. The floor is yours. Okay. Hi. Thanks so much for having me. And um, I'm going to start with where Colette left off in terms of precincts being organized as being number one. We're actually the boots on the ground. And um, what Colette has done with the voter education guide is remarkable it's fabulous i have i did a training what the what the uh, voter guide is it goes through from precinct level all the way up to federal level of uh, the roles of positions so that people understand what we're talking about because um, as a precinct chair i know when i call people to introduce myself as i'm your precinct chair they're like oh that's so nice lady um so i have to educate them on who i and what the position even means, because the average person has absolutely no idea. 
So bringing um, the precincts together, making sure that we're all organized and that we are educating them, that is role number one. And to also focus, I make my focus on the local level. So the people understand the implications. I say, you know what, don't worry about the federal right now. Worry about what's happening in your own state because that, that point is the jump off point for everything that travels up the chain. So um, speaking about the efforts in terms of voter protection, I come from it from two different perspectives. Well, it's the same perspective. Um, in 2008, I was a um, poll observer for um, President Obama's campaign because I realized, I said, after doing all this canvassing and, and phone calling, I need to be in that room to make sure that everything goes right. And my instincts were very, very good because it was 7 a.m. in the morning. I hadn't even gotten my coffee yet. And the election judge was asking for voter ID. And this was in Minneapolis at the time where I was living. And we didn't have voter ID. So I had to go, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. That, that person's name is on the roll. That's illegal. If I would not have been in the room, I have no idea what would have happened. Um, but cool thing is by the end of the day, she apologized to me because she knew she was doing wrong. So I, I really take that um, very kindly. I was really glad about that. But taking that forward to today, I know that Mecklenburg County is looking, actively looking for people to be in the room as, a, as well as outside of the polling place. I've, I've been in both situations. I always go, um, I'm at my poll, my precinct um, for early vote and day of. And it's really important because there's so many issues that happen outside of the polls before you even get in, like language barriers. I've had um, Hispanic people come to me and they're like, I mean, I, I only know a tiny bit. I should know more. I'm slapping myself for that. I, I got plenty of time. <laughs> um, so, but there, there needs to be that help and there needs to be that lawyer on the phone. There needs to be somebody there that goes, wait, hold up, this is, something's not right. Um, I would go, I go into the polling location and I ask people that are working in there, does anyone speak Spanish? Fortunately, the last, the last election, I, there were people that were in there that spoke Spanish because that was worrisome to me. I'm like, how are we, the people that we're getting to be inside and outside, are, are they multilingual? Who is it that they're being, um, being recruited? It needs to be multicultural as well. Um, so that's really, really important on election day to follow everything through, through our educating uh, our voters, through getting them to the polls, expressing to them how important that is. Um, I'm also working with a program that to link the two of us together, there's a texting program that Mecklenburg County Democratic Party is um, hosting, is doing, and I've been working with them, we're doing it we started in May and we'll go through um, to election. We're we are contacting people in our precinct by text. And it seems that people, um, they, they feel more comfortable, I think, sometimes doing a text versus being on the phone. Sometimes people feel, you know, pressured to say something right then and there. This gives them the opportunity to respond back when they when they want to if they feel comfortable so i introduce myself so the first thing we do is just introduce ourselves we don't we're not asking them to do anything we're just making that connection i'm your liaison if you have any questions at all about what's going on in terms of who's running what does this mean where can i get absentee ballots so impressing upon them that you know we're the liaison i'm your liaison to get that information and i'm glad you brought up the road down there collect that the Voter education, that is by, I mean, it's, it's uh, multilingual. Hindu, Spanish, <laughs> as well as English, which is awesome. And um, it's, it's really important for us to establish those relationships and keep them throughout the year. That's one of the main things that I hear from people that I talk to is they don't hear from people. It's only at election time does anybody connect with them. 
And that's something that we really, really have to work on. So that's what I would like to see with us moving forward is, is to look at this. This is a year round education, year round to impress upon people how important it is so that we don't find ourselves back in this situation again, because we will, because people just opted out in 2016. They were like, whatever, I don't like either one of them. I'm going, okay, would you rather die or would you rather live? And that's what I'm telling people right now, because that's the bottom line and that, that, that's where I, I come from. So that's what I would like to see more voter engagement all year round. Um, texting is great for connecting with people. And then you can find out what their issues are and come up, come meet them where they are, as opposed to me saying, well, if you come to a precinct meeting, then I'll teach you blah, 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 blah. Here I can connect with them and they can feel comfortable in their own home and everything. So meeting all year round with people, connecting with them, voter education is crucial. Thank you, Ms. Colette, because that's crucial. That is vital. Uh, everybody needs to go through that training and we can and it's perfect because it's online so just like we're online zooming right now you can do the same thing training on zoom just and donna maria i just want to say first of all i know you learned a lot from chicago and democratic um, machine politics it's very obvious i think you also spent time in detroit with my former boss john connor so it sounds like you learned a little bit in, 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 the, in those two cities i'm just saying um now, one, one thing I do want to say is what we are going to do in terms of voter education, we're going to be doing intensive Zoom um, voter education um, campaigns, at least in Mecklenburg County and throughout our state. So whatever we've been concerned about, voter ID, absentee balance, fraud, um, voter purging, because I'm seeing in the chat box, well, what about voter ID? And uh, we, can't, we can't like educate people unless we have a structure to do so. And Colette and Donna Marie, they have the structure already in place. So this is what Charles Stevenson has been saying. Let's connect with organizations who are already doing this and then build off you know, these organizations. Then we can take our election protection or what Harvey calls the trifecta, which will be out hopefully on our website very soon. So thank you, Donna Marie. Quick question, lightning round, 20 seconds, and then I'm gonna go to our two other speakers. Donna Marie, how many people in Charlotte Mecklenburg do you think <clears throat> understand anything about absentee voting like w how to get one what you know what do you think like there, what, there's what percentage a, um i know from mecklenburg county democratic party making people aware i know that as precinct chairs we've been educating our neighborhoods about here's where you go here's the link um the great thing of that happened was in raleigh the senate was able to get past where you know, people can um, request it, the absentee ballot, the, and they can fill it out online. So they have options. So they can either um, fill it out online and send it right in, or they can print it out and take it to the elections office if they feel more comfortable. But we've been doing a lot. We've just gotten our blue ballot out, which is another educational tool and um just got i just got mine yesterday it doesn't have anything about the vice president because we don't know that yet but when that information comes out <laughs> it will be updated to that but it's another great um educational tool so that's something else that that's um out there and that we're pushing into the public and don i want to tell you what harvey has tasked us with is try to, to come up with a template that we can export in other states so first of all thank you for your leadership um we got michael Merenstein, two minutes at the Alliance of Moral Progressives, in terms of your work with Andrew Miller for the Center of Common Ground, Center for Common Ground, we know that in North Carolina, we've had the largest purge in the country, over 500,000 people purged. We're asking Greg Powell to come here. We're going to ask him to do a study of how many were purged illegally. It was done, I think, in 2018, in one week during a, um, I think it was Christmas. That kind of makes me suspicious. But Michael, tell us about the great work that you're already doing and that, as part of our coalition. Welcome to the call. Absolutely, and thank you, Joel. Um, as, as all of you know, um, Joel has um, a great habit of seeds that later come to fruition. And one of the seeds that he's planted is here in Charlotte, um, an organiz our, the organization that I'm associated, Alliance of Moral Progressives. Um, and um, of, of that seed, we're currently involved, as uh, Joel mentioned, um, in an effort with Andrea Miller's Center, Center for Common Ground. 
um, and her um, Reclaim Our Vote initiative. Um, one of the things that's exciting is that Andrea Miller um, has had success in the past um, using the very tools that I'll be talking about. Um, so for example, in 2018, they increased um, they increased turnout by a full help uh, increase uh, turnout by a full 11 percent, and that resulted in upset election results. Um, Ms. Miller has uh, is looking to increase uh, turnout of people of color in um, the upcoming election by 25 percent. Um, specifically, it's divided up into three separate efforts: reclaim our effort, reclaim our vote, let me vote, and count my vote. Um, Briefly, um, how did North Carolina be part of, of this effort, um, which has recently been expanded um, from six states to eight states, now including Florida and South Carolina? Um, I, there's another um, graduate of uh, Michael Jordan, you, um, Andrew Reynolds. He, he did a, a study um, that showed the state of North Carolina in 2016 um, had an, gave it an election integrity score that ranked it um, among, um, if it were a nation, it would rank among places like Cuba, Indo Indonesia, Sierra, Sierra Leone. And this was before um, the theft of election in District 9 in 2018. So um, North Carolina has certainly earned its place on that short list in, those e in these efforts. Um, as has been a theme here, um, Democratic Party, whether national or local, um, has operated as a fundraising organization. Progressive organizations doing, no matter how wonderful their work, have the habit of operating in silos. And so now um, we're faced with a, ja a challenge uh, in which divided we, fa we fall, only united um, we, we come together. Um, in North Carolina, uh, 6 million minority voters represent 27.6% of the vote. 21% per, currently unregistered. Um, and um, in addition to that, uh, many um, wrongfully deregistered. Uh, by the end of this August, um, they're expecting another 594,632 voters um, to be removed, um, or they're eligible to be removed, and we should expect that they will. Um, what Ms. Miller and the Center for Common Ground have done is they've created a program with targeted proven tools um, to help reach purged voters, make them aware that they've been removed from the rolls, help them to re-register. Part of a get out the vote effort um, and um, even the creation of things like a monitoring election day app which um, reports to national media like MSNBC um, for anomalies on election day. Um, those are a, a very quick summary. In North Carolina, um, um, Center for Common Ground and AMP, uh, AMP hasn't, well, there's already been 33,000 get out the vote calls made, um, 37,000 voter registration um, calls made. There is a goal um, to send out 1.2 million handwritten postcards um, for delivering messages such, such as vote for our lives was a theme that I've already heard. Um, we found, uh, why, why postcarding? It's found that that's um, one of the most effective ways to reach um, these hard to reach voters, such as older voters, voters of color, rural voters. Um, currently there's 985,000 um, addresses that they have as for this postcarding effort. Um, so the goal is ambitious. What's needed is the people power. And that um, AMP is not a large organization. AMP America is not a large organization, um, but we are um, spearheading efforts um, to get community activists and organizers excited, involved, and plugged in. Um, unfortunately, um, it seems that folks, most people either assume that these efforts um, are already underway and being done by somebody else. Um, if folks that don't assume these efforts are underway, um, might be a lot of them are cynical and don't believe that anything can be done. And then there's others who just think everything's just going to turn out okay. But the effort here in North Carolina with AMP, with um, uh, Center for Common Ground, is to get people to the tools that are already established to re-register, 
get people out to vote and safeguard them on election day. Brother Michael, I see that you grew your hair back, that the, um, the Michael Jordan look, uh, anyway, I'm kidding, but you look great. The, 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 the great thing about that is, is that's easily remedied. <laughs> well, I'm not clipping your hair in Mecklenburg County unless you pay me. All right, so that almost, con I'm gonna just uh, very briefly in a, about 120 seconds, I'm gonna explain the draft of our plan. This is the North Carolina Action Plan. It is based on uh, uh, Harvey's trifecta plan. We're contacting existing election protection organizations and those working on election protection in North Carolina. Um, we want to rapidly create a coordinated election protection campaign in the state of North Carolina, and we want to find funding to expand and strengthen existing election protection efforts in North Carolina. It, 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 it's pretty much common sense if we can get, you know, um, 200,000, 300,000, a million dollars, I would love to give that money to the African American Caucus or some of the existing groups so we can expand our reach. We want um, also, what we wanna do is, we're gonna be focused on educating North Carolina voters, especially black and brown, and students about everything they need to know about absentee voting. There currently is no plan to do so specifically. However, the people who you've already we talked, Donna Marie Woodson, Colette Austin, we're gonna build off their plan and, uh, and ensure that that's a big part of the already existing plan of voter education. Um, we have 500,000 people in North Carolina have been purged off the voting rolls. And Michael just talked about what we're doing in order to re-register. Um, this is Harvey's idea. We're, we're going to become embedded in the local North Carolina Board of Elections in our counties. We're going to meet with the county chairs. In North Carolina, there are three Democrats and two Republicans in every county uh, um, in terms of the board. And, but we, we want to discuss their plans on early voting, what how, what are they doing on the day of the election, absentee ballot counting, number of polling places, provisional ballots, and then there, there are gonna be some uh, counties that still think there's a voter ID requirement and that got struck down. But we are, we've already heard about uh, people at the polls being asked for their ID, uh, even in New York, by the way. Um, we wanna have a huge presence at the voting polls the day of the election to supervise the election and deal with problems at the voter polls. There are gonna be a lot of problems that are gonna arise um, we're going to have to meet with our county board of elections and ask them how to do that because you have to get permission. And I know that Colette and Donna have expertise on that. Um, we want to have a huge presence post-election to ensure that all the ballots are counted and it's a fair election. I know John Brakey is an expert on that. Harvey, I'm going to swing it back to you. I want to thank all my colleagues who are the geniuses behind all this. And uh, I'm just trying to help coordinate this effort. Thank you. Okay. Can everybody hear me all right? Joel, you were fantastic. That was a beautiful performance uh, pr presentation. And this is the template of what we need. Joel has pulled together the existing, many of the existing organizations in North Carolina. You all are going to the election boards. Um, um, you know, uh, Donna Marie, your presentation was dynamite, everybody. Uh, and so we need to see this as a template for action. The, the, these groups in North Carolina that, that Joel ha has pulled together um, uh, uh, Reverend Glancy, Glancy Rhetoric has joined us, um, who's spoken with us before. I wish we had in, in every state in the country what we have in North Carolina. And so uh, if you'll contact Joel, Joel, I'm going to ask you to write up a couple of paragraphs laying out how you've done, what you've done in North Carolina. We have 90 days to duplicate this, at least in all the swing states. And, uh, you know, the integration of the activism into the election boards, uh, which you've discussed so beautifully, Willie and the rest of you, um, is just absolutely, Charles Stevenson, is absolutely essential. And you've also managed to um, reach out to the Democratic Party um, and get, get them to understand the grassroots nature of the imperative that we're facing here in this election. So uh, we'll have you back, everybody from North Carolina, but uh, please, we all should, take heart about this because we do have a template that's working. I mean, it's in place. We have a state coordinator, which is Joel. We have the legal expertise. We have the organizations uh, with Charles and, and Donna Marie and Colette and, and Glency and so many others. Uh, and it, it, this is really uh, what has to happen nationwide. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm told by the way that Nina is on the phone from North, from uh, um, Indivisible. Indivisible. 
and, and, and we need to recognize her. And um, because that's a national um, a network of local organizations. And that, that's what we really need everywhere. So another place where we're really moving ahead in a tangible way is Arizona. And um, uh, John Brakey, are you with us? Can we have you unmuted? John Brakey, you're in um, uh, Phoenix, um, in Maricopa County. I'm here. You're there. And um, Yes, I am. Told, Thank you. You've told me that uh, Phoenix is a ghost town. I mean, we are witnessing the collapse of the United States of America. I think one thing we should do on this call is have a, um, um, a, a pool, a betting pool as to when the stock market is going to collapse. And, but, and because that is going to change everything. But we won't talk about that in detail. It is something in the back of our minds. John, you t we talked today. You've had tremendous success in Arizona, another swing state. Can you tell us what the nature of your success has been? And again, Joel, thank you so much for paving the way here and now. And now, My John. Pleasure. Well, thank you. And thank you, everybody before me for the work that they're doing in North Carolina. That is a very important swing state. We're involved in there, too. We're looking forward to be part of your coalition. You know, what we want to do is make sure that we can help you uh, understand the technology of the equipment that you're using. And, uh, and letting you know the good news is that most of your state now is 100% digital. And that means you have two official ballots, the one that you marked and one the machine counted. One is easily a public record that we'll have to fight for. That's the ballot image, the original one that protects. But uh, getting back to what I was telling uh, Harvey earlier today is that I've been uh, appointed by the Libertarian Party to be their person inside the election of our access to everything that's going on in Maricopa County, which is now the second largest voting district in the United States with a total of 2.5 million voters. And, uh, and, you know, and one thing for me being up there, uh, I'm very proud to be up there representing the Libertarian Party because uh, I work with, even though I am a progressive Democrat, but my Libertarian brothers do believe in having, and sisters believe in having elections that are transparent, trackable, and publicly verified. And, you know, I've sued Maricopa County about four times, okay? The last time I sued them was 2016. In 2010, Jesus, they drove me to a practically heart attack because it was such intense fighting that was going on because how bad and how corrupt it was. And to go in there this time and work in Maricopa County, wow, what a difference. You know, uh, four years ago when I sued them, I sued the election administrator, uh, uh, F, the people who ran that, and uh, we didn't win the lawsuit, but we changed the whole system. And a man named Adrian Fontes came in and he took over who happens to be a friend of mine. And, uh, and then the people up there getting in this time, I was, had a lot of anxiety, uh, but they made me feel welcomed. They, made, they wanted to show me how much they changed the system and how transparent. And they were showing me how they now adjudicate ballot images to make sure that if somebody overvoted, was it a mistake on a vote by mail? Instead of having to dupe it, they could redline it. Uh, remarkable systems. I mean, uh, you could, I'm putting up a document at the end of one of my remarks that you'll find a link and you can watch Maricopa County. You can watch Pima County. Those two counties by themselves are 75% of the vote. And we've impacted them over the last 16 so years. So John, how, how exactly, right John, tell us exactly real quickly, how exactly have you impacted them? And what can we learn from you to duplicate in the other states? Well, one, get informed, and two, get involved, and three, take action. You know, uh, basically, so, I go in, I investigate, I educate, what I find wrong, and then, uh, you know, if they don't get it, I agitate a little bit, and then I get ready to do the, the third thing, or the fourth thing, is really try to hug them before I sue them, and let them know <laughs> it's not personal, we disagree, and, uh, and in the United States law, if we disagree, I have a right to take you to court, and I use a writ of mandamus, and I basically ask the judge, I say, your honor, could you please order these people to follow the law, and the law is pretty simple. You don't destroy public records, and they're mandated. And it's a really good trick to be able to do to get action 
to happen. Uh, we're doing it right now in Florida. Florida, I just received a phone call uh, from my lawyer out of DC. And he was telling me, now they're starting to change this, what they're talking about. You know, all of a sudden, now they're saying, well, we didn't turn it on, you know. Now they're saying, well, it was on, but it was not really on, but it did make an image, but it didn't have to be saved. I mean, so they're coming around. I mean, the argument in Florida is, I say that the world is round and a digital scanner creates a public record because it can't work unless it does it first. They're saying they didn't turn it on and the world is flat. They're losing that argument. Uh, okay, we're doing really but the well. point is, we're now in Michigan. I'll go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, Arby. yes. No, uh, the point is that you personally got in there, and that's what we oh, have, to, have do to People have yeah, to. Yeah, no, I, uh, this, is, uh, this is where the fight is. Is on the front line. You know, yeah, so tell us what we can be out there doing it. Tell us. Well, we have to be in there doing it as well. Tell us very quickly what's happening in Michigan. Michigan. You know, I'm working, when I go into a state, I try to find the best talent to work with, and I'll tell you why. There's nothing like going into a state and investigating and leaving and saying, I wish I could stay longer to keep causing good trouble, as, uh, uh, as the late Lewis had to say. I mean, you know, uh, well, I have we, Jan Van have Dorn anybody, in Michigan I'm working with. Jan do we have Van anybody Dorn. on the call from Michigan? Anybody on the call from Michigan? Uh, the, the, um, we need people in Michigan. And John, you've been going up there and you've been in their face in Michigan. We all know Michigan's a swing state. So and it's um, a very bad state when it comes to voting because it's not transparent. It's not trackable. It's not publicly verified. Uh, you know, it, just use Maricopa as an example, the tale of two cities. Let's use Phoenix, Maricopa, and let's use Wayne County, Detroit. Okay. Uh, me and Steve Rosenfeld worked Detroit and uh, Wayne County very hard going to a lot of location. We never saw one election management system. Everything there was a virtual private network. When the precinct produces a result, they push a button and it goes through the internet. <laughs> you know, not a good system. Uh, when we went to the site where they were doing the uh, verifying the vote by mail once again, uh, you know, we would say, gee, uh, you know, where's the EMS? And uh, they said, we don't know. We just push this button. And that button sends all the results over the internet. Okay. I call it an insider's oh. network. And it's a very okay. bad have situation you, in Michigan because of this. So have you found people in Michigan? Everybody on the call. By the way, we have 97 people on this call. And they're, you know, with lots of great organizations represented. But we need representation in Michigan and and, yes. we, and John and Steve have done the groundwork in Michigan on the basic problems with the system. That's, you know, it's a two-step. We need to know, as, as in North Carolina, we're gonna hear from Ohio and Pennsylvania what the nightmares are in each step and then we, in state, each state, and then we need people in each state to, to deal with it. So uh, John, everybody knows how to get a hold of you. If you'll put your email back up there, um, I will, and I also will post something that will give people links that they'll understand how we do the letter to the Board of Elections and put them on notice. Then there will be a link to the public records request that we use in every county. It's a very firm records request, and it lets them know that they're informed. Because, you know, as Dr. Spearman in North Carolina once told me, he said something very profound. He says, you know, I'm a, I sit on an election board, and people come in, after the election, they say, gee, Dr. Spearman, how could you have voted that way? And he says, because you weren't here to get me informed. Okay, that so that's it. We need the people, we need the people on the ground. To get informed and help these people get informed. Because we when need, I go right, after them, people. I don't get them until I can prove that they are dis actually uh, disobeying the law. Okay, so we need people on the ground. We need people on the ground. And John, you have the knowledge in Michigan. If anybody can get to Michael Moore, for God's sakes, and other Please. people in Michigan, uh, it would be really, really helpful. Uh, but John, you have the uh, inside story on both Michigan and Arizona. Okay, thank and you so much. We're organizing in Pennsylvania right now, which is a very well, we have important. Someone uh, North on Carolina, uh, you know, that's very important. And in yes. Arizona, so right now we are in five states active, three yes. very hard. And the document okay. I'm getting ready to post uh, here you'll be able to pull it down, read it, and go to links and see different things and see how we okay. do it in more detail. Great. 
Thank you, Absolutely. Harvey. Thank you, everybody, Thank you, John. for doing, Thank doing you what for you're doing by work. getting involved. So we need people in Michigan, especially John knows, John and Steve Rosenfeld have the inside information on Michigan. We will be, we'll have a, a running head start. Uh, I'm asked to call real quick on Nina from Indivisible. Uh, are you with us, Nina? Uh, can, you, can you give us a couple words? Then we're gonna go to Ohio and Pennsylvania. Uh, Nina from Indivisible, are you on? Yeah, I'm here, how are you? Okay, are real quick, Nina, tell us. Welcome from, uh, from uh, and then give us an insight what is Indivisible doing. Thanks. So um, it's great to hear all the work that you all are doing on the ground. As everybody knows, uh, this work is largely done county by county. Um, I'm here in Los Angeles where we have um, a voter protection group that in response to the, um, the March primary really hit the ground running to address a lot of the issues that we had in Los Angeles during the primary. Um, and it's a group of indivisibles. So it's exactly what we are trying to do at National and trying to get folks to do. Um, so I just wanted to highlight a couple of things that National is doing um, to further this work, uh, this, this really important election protection work. Um, the first one we're doing is, um, is doing a huge call to action to make sure that our um, senators are pushing for the, um, the HEROES Act, which is the most recent version of the relief bill, which um, has a ton of provisions for um, voter safety and voter protection. We are working um, on the ground. A lot of our groups are doing the work, um, doing election protection, meeting with their county board of supervisors, meeting with their uh, registrars of voters. Um, and then as a, an organization, we partnered with Access Democracy to put together a voter guide um, that helps with, or it's really a, an election guide that helps our indivisible groups be doing the work on the ground. So the guide covers different actions you can take right now to change how elections are run, make voting more accessible for every eligible, eligible person, make sure every vote is counted, make sure that your, that our you know, our votes aren't being tampered with. Um, so I'm gonna drop the link to that guide for folks to be able to take a look at it. It has some great information on it. Um, but like I said, a lot of this work is being done on the state and the local level. That's what it needs to be done. Um, and, and that's what we're trying to help support our folks do. Okay. So Mimi, can you, con can, uh, Nina, can you contact, connect us with the local people and, get, and send us the list of, and Alan Minsky is on the line from Progressive Democrats of America. And, and we need to ha not, not to have a monolith, but to have all these group people on the ground connected. So I don't have a list of everyone across America. I, I cover the Southern California area. Um, so I know all the groups that are doing it in Southern California and I'm happy to get folks involved. Jennifer Tanner and Deborah are both on this call. Um, both of them work with the voter action group that is doing this work in Los Angeles. Um, and they are you know, in regular communication with the, the groups around here that are doing it. Now, I think the best way to go about this is really getting in contact with the um, with the local groups in whatever area you're yes, in. Yes, exactly. We have Indivisibles all over. Um, you can reach out to Indivisible National and get connected with the organizer. Okay, can Actually, you give us a connection? So yeah, yes. I'm gonna okay. drop all the links in the chat. And you can also actually um, see, we have all of our Indivisible groups that are active. We have their um, name and their contact information for their group leaders on a map. So you can reach out to an Indivisible group leader in your community and get them involved in this work. That's um, what we I'll want. All those links in there for you. I'll also drop the link to the guide, our call to action. And we also have been working with a coalition of grassroots groups that um, have formed Protect the Results, which is um, a, a, a campaign to basically protect the integrity of our elections come November, because we know that they're going to be called um, into question by yes, of course. So, so what, um, we need, what we need now is to integrate your network with, with Alan Minsky from Progressive Democrats of America. All these grassroots networks got to be identified state by state so that what you just heard from Joel and from uh, about North Carolina and from John about Arizona and Michigan, we can duplicate uh, all around the country. Okay. Perfect. I'll drop a ton of links in the chat for you and I'll also put my email if you guys have any questions, I'm always here. Right. And um, uh, Mike, Mike Hurst, the engineer, makes the chat 
available to everyone after the call. So, and, and the recording is also available. Fantastic. <laughs> Nina, thank you so much for, you. For, for checking in. And uh, we, we want to hear from Sunrise and other, grass, other organizations like yours that are grassroots with networks all over the country. That's the key to doing this. Okay, uh, Pete Johnson uh, from Ohio has raised an important issue if, uh, if, and it's something we need to think about. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention it, and then we're going to move into talk about Ohio with Bob. Because the, the situation in Ohio is an absolute nightmare beyond belief, and, and it's what we really face uh, in the catastrophe of this election. Pete has suggested that we need to talk both about vote by mail and about early voting, because early voting now becomes a key with the assault on vote by mail and the postal service. So, Bob, can you, Bob Fatrake is my co conspirator here and one of the pioneers of election protection, the only one on this call, I think who did election protection in El Salvador in the 1980s, where it was actually easier to vote. Um, uh, Bob, tell us what the situation is in Ohio now. It's beyond belief. And then we'll talk about Pennsylvania as well. Bob, Bob Fatrakis? Hello, Bob. All right, let me, let me uh, until Bob chimes in, uh, I think he's unmuted. Okay. Uh, I hope. Can you hear me now? Yes, you're good. Okay, go ahead. Well, the uh, most recent things that happened in Ohio, the uh, Democratic Party uh, actually filed suit uh, at the end of last week uh, against Secretary of State's office. Uh, that is, they want people to have the ability to send in for a um, ballot. Uh, as opposed to waiting for the Secretary of State uh, to deliver every registered vote. Uh, in 2016, as you know, Harvey, there was a horrible accident and uh, there were six million voters who were supposed to get ballot applications. Uh, One million who were primarily black and poor, uh, unfortunately never received the ballot application. And some who got the ballot application uh, were actually purged. It was used to purge them when the Secretary of State sent them a ballot. So the polls are showing that uh, Biden's actually up by two, three points. Uh, and the other thing, the A. Philip Randolph Institute uh, has sued as well over the important issue of how counties uh, measure whether your signature is correct or not. Uh, some people, uh, uh, are disenfranchised in places like Franklin County because they sign below the line or partially below the line. So that will be litigated. Also, uh, it's been positive the Columbus Dispatch, uh, which is doing a good job, uh, watching the Secretary of State, the Dispatch uh, found out old information on the Secretary of State site uh, indicating you didn't have to put stamps uh, when you mailed in uh, for a ballot uh, or uh, to put stamps uh, when you mailed your ballot in. Uh, this turned out to be incorrect old information. So a lot of people uh, would not have uh, been able to turn their ballots in. They used this before uh, uh, one year, uh, they put uh, instead of one stamp, uh, there was two stamps and if you put two stamps uh, on it, it would get there. If you put one stamp, where there was only one stamp slot, it wouldn't get there. So they found 10,000 ballots down on the east side of Columbus in the black area uh, that weren't going to be forwarded. Uh, but uh, we reported that and, uh, and the mail uh, did come forward, but it was a local mail carrier who thought it was real strange all the uh, absentee ballots uh, were piling up. Also, uh, one last thing, right? you can only uh, uh, really vote at the voting center if you're disabled uh, or homeless, or if you're trying uh, to claim to vote uh, as a provisional voter. So, so the uh, one, one spot per county. The situation in Ohio is this. If you um, uh, want to vote in Ohio, you have to uh, get a, a ballot um, uh, application. And now we we just had an announcement today, or within the last couple of days, that the state of Nevada 
is going to send a the legislature in Nevada, which is the first legislature in U.S. history to be a majority of women, has um, approved sending a ballot to every registered voter. So that means Colorado, Utah, um, Oregon, Washington, Hawaii, and now California and Nevada are lined up to send everybody a vote, a ballot. In Ohio, they wait until 30 days before the election, and then they send you an application, not a ballot, an application. Then you've got to get it, you've got to send it back in, then you've got to get the ballot. Then you've got to send that back in. You cannot early vote in Ohio at all unless you are handicapped or homeless. You got that? If you want to vote early in Ohio, you cannot do it by law unless you're handicapped or homeless. It's, it's just unbelievable. And the state legislature has mandated that in each county, including Franklin, which is Columbus, which is more than a million people, Cuyahoga, more than a million people, Hamilton, about a million people, each every and every one of the 88 counties in Ohio will have only one place to vote. So the place to vote in, in Columbus is in an abandoned coals in the middle of nowhere. So the legislature has per, set up a perfect storm. And what are we doing about it? Well, Bob is the state coordinator, and we are there are lawsuits going on, but this is an absolute disaster in Ohio. No matter how much Biden appears to be ahead in the polls, there's no, there's no way to vote. You can't early vote in Ohio. And you can't even get an application until 30 days before. Who knows when it's going to come? You send it back in. Who knows when your ballot's going to come? This is a perfect setup for a stolen election in the state of Ohio. Am I right? They're claiming there's 10 to 14 days it takes uh, each way. So it could take you, uh, if you start at 30 days, 28 days if you're lucky to get it in. Also, they're not counting anything that comes in uh, late uh, unless it was postmarked a week ahead of the election. God, I mean, this is outrageous. And, and this, is, this is Ohio, people. So what can we do about it? Bob is heading, in, is heading up the Ohio network and we're gonna to have to go into the election boards and gonna to have to deal with the, the legislature and the, and the Secretary of State. As, as Bob pointed out, the Secretary of State po posted false information on the official website, saying that your, your he ballot- says, He says old, old information. It was a tragic mistake. It's, it's, it's really uh, terrifying. And, and, and we're we also have, working with Greg Pallast and we just, uh, requested all new purges that have occurred uh, since last year uh, to see uh, who the Secretary of State uh, is eliminating from the voters list. Right. Okay, let's go to Pennsylvania now. Um, um, I'm sorry, uh, the, the woman from Pennsylvania, I'm looking for your name here. Uh, Joel Siegel, um, will you recognize uh, the woman from Pennsylvania? She was gonna give us a brief rundown of what's going on there. This is what we're facing in the big swing states, and, and Pennsylvania, for God's sakes, has a Democratic governor. So um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I apologize. I've no, it's a, Anita, Prizio, Anita, Anita Prizio. Anita out Prizio. Anita County Council. I, I put you a little Italian accent in there. I don't know if that's should pronounce it. Okay. Anita, you still on the phone? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Um, Welcome. So, Anita. yeah. Uh, Pennsylvania is, is definitely going through some issues and I'm on County Council and Bethany Hallam is on the Board of Direction, uh, Board of Election and she is also on this call. So she might be able to talk a little bit about this, but um, you know, as, as everyone's aware, Trump's reelection campaign is suing us, suing all the, um, uh, the 77, 67 counties plus the Pennsylvania Department of State. Um, so we had um, vote by mail in the primaries um, and there were some issues, but um, you know, I think this is a swing state and um, we have a lot of active people. Um, I know I'm in touch with individual, but um, maybe I'll, I'll turn this over to Bethany. Can you unmute Bethany? Cause she can, as a, as a member of the board, she's probably- Now what county are you in? Allegheny County. And what's There's the Bethany. Is that Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh, yeah. All right. Let's hear so about I, will, 
Definitely. I will add on that. Yeah, thank you so much, Anita. And thank you all for having me today. Um, so the first thing I want to point out is that in Allegheny County, for the first time ever, we actually had the ability to use hand marked paper ballots on election day at the polls. That was a first yeah. for us here in Allegheny County. Um, and so also, this is the this primary was the first election ever that Pennsylvanians were able to vote by mail without excuse. We just got the right to do that via Act 77 that was passed by the PA legislature last year. Um, and one of the things that I'm most proud of out of all of this is that in Allegheny County, we actually uh, voted on the Board of Elections to send every registered voter a mail-in ballot application. Whoa. And I, I heard, I know, it was a well, we know, An application or the actual ballot? So in Pennsylvania, we are not allowed to send a ballot without an application first. So we are not able via our election code and the restrictions that they have in place on us to send everybody a ballot. So what we did is we sent everybody a mail-in ballot and actually over two thirds of our total turnout in the primary voted by mail. And in certain parts of Pittsburgh, we actually had over 80 to 90% of the total voters voting by mail. And it was our first time ever able to do that. Something else that we saw as a result of sending everybody a mail-in ballot application was we actually completely eliminated the education divide that we often see with mail-in voting. It's usually higher educated folks who vote by mail and lower educated folks who vote in person. And there's been a lot of places that, that have been trying to figure out how to close that divide. And we were able to do that. And I really attribute that to us sending every registered voter an application. So can people get applications other than in the mail? When Sherrod Brown was Secretary of State, he had applications for ballots everywhere. McDonald's, yes. can you get an application other than by mail? Yes, so you can request um, a ballot via mail, you can request the ballot online, but you can get a mail and application anywhere. I carry a stack around in the back of my car just in case I'm anywhere that I wanna promote mail and voting. That's fantastic, that's what has to happen. And Bob, if we can get that in Ohio so that people don't have to wait for the, the application to come in the mail, uh, that's fantastic. Thank you. Is there, uh, uh, so Pennsylvania, uh, we have problems but, and challenges, but now is this only in Allegheny County or are there other counties? Um, only if you're asking about us, only in Allegheny County is what I was talking specifically about with uh, the mail-in ballot applications being sent to everyone. But something that is happening statewide is that our governor actually just announced within the past day that prepaid postage for the return of ballots will be provided to everyone who decides to vote by mail. We provided prepaid postage in Allegheny County for the primary. That was something we decided to do on our own, but our governor just announced that we'll be doing it all across the Commonwealth. So clearly the key then to the state of Pennsylvania is to get all the counties to provide um, ballot applications um, with, through the mail or otherwise. Correct. So the individual people and the PDA people in the rest of the state got to jump on what's happening in Allegheny. Bethany, if you could write that up as an article and say, tell, send it to me and to Steve and to other people, on the, to everybody on this call so that we can use it as a template, that's got to happen all over the country. Yes, it does. I mean, if it doesn't happen in Ohio, people aren't going to vote. I mean, it's just, uh, if you have to get an application, then it's got to be available immediately. Okay, thank you so much, Bethany. That's wonderful. Appreciate it. Uh, Dorothy Reich and then Mimi Kennedy. Um, um, uh, Dorothy, you, you and I talked earlier about postcards going out. Dorothy, you had a hand up. Okay, you're unmuted. Um, so there are groups of people who send out postcards and they've been sent to voters to get them to go out and vote. And they've been sending them out, it seems, just before the election to get people who hadn't voted yet to get to the polls. And I spoke to them and I said, well, I think you should be sending two ways at least, but you need to send postcards out to have people check their registration and be sure they're registered. And uh, I think that I need some support with, you know, from somebody, you know, maybe a letter from this group or something to encourage them to do that. So I'm um, trying to get all the groups together that my friend Rebecca sent me. There's a bunch of them, but we need to, um, to use that, that ability that they have to reach so many people with their postcards to use it 
to get people to register to vote and not just use it at the last minute. They sent me an instruction to send out the postcards in October. Yeah, the election's right. over by October. I mean, every, that's the, the point, Dorothy, and thank you, is that everything we're going to do now to save this election has to be done now. We, we can't wait uh, until, uh, until October. We can't even wait till later in August. Any postcards that go out got to go out now. Thank you. And I want to say one other thing. Um, I was just reading, you know, that within 100 miles of any border, Trump can send his Department of uh, Homeland Security thugs to attack you because you're in a constitution-free zone, they call it. It turns out that the constitution-free zone is like two-thirds of the people in this country because it not only includes the border with Canada and the border with Mexico, it includes the, the, the oceans. So Los Angeles is within 100 miles of a border because the Pacific Ocean is the border. And New York City is within 100 miles of the border because the Atlantic Ocean is a border. Yeah. So what they're saying is that Trump it could very well send, because he can't get the Army or the National Guard to do anything for him. But these are his stormtroopers, these DHS people. And they could actually go into Detroit and either intimidate voters or just flat out steal the, the right. uh, box of, of, of ballots. That's why we have and to we have people be aware. We need to have people in all the black areas of all the people in this constitution free zone because well, we have no rights in those zones. If he we'll sends send the postcards now. Absolutely, Dorothy. Mm -hmm. and we, that's why the postcards got to go now. Well, we got postcards and we need to have our people there to to uh, resist. Make sure that these DHS people don't come in and, and turn these polling places upside down. Hey, right. hey um, Harvey, I have to say something. Okay, and then Mimi. Listen, th this is very serious, what, what we're hearing about Ohio and everywhere else, but if there are any donors on the call, it, it's really important to understand that you, you have you have to fund people to be on the ground. I, I would love to get people from Indivisible, Black Lives Matter, um, you yeah. know, the Bernie Sanders campaign. We have to figure out a way rapidly to use our resources that we already have. It, but we also have to raise money. That's something that the left doesn't do very well and we get left out. Whereas the Republicans are gonna spend $20 million to suppress the vote. That is how they're gonna put 50,000 people on the polls Okay, the nurse is going to get some Vienna sausages. Okay, I'm being funny, but I, I think you got my point, right? Yes, and the, we have to have money. Wants, we got to have money. Anyone who wants to donate, go to Bob Fatrakis. He has the 501c3 set up. We do not make this a fundraising call, but Joel is right to raise the issue of money. We actually have raised money from this call. We want to thank our anonymous donor and anybody who knows donors. The money goes straight to putting people in the field. We have no. Um, uh, apparatus. We have no bureaucracy. The money goes right to those people who are at the uh, uh, the Allegheny County and wherever else uh, you are in the election board. That's where it goes. Uh, thank you, Joel. Mimi Kennedy. Yeah. Thank you for calling on me, Harvey, because uh, Mike, thank you for talking about solutions and what we can do. Uh, it. I just want to reiterate that as uh, scary as the forces we oppose, the election protection movement is so much better this year than it's ever been. I remember all the things that everyone on this call knows used to be called getting into the weeds and you weren't allowed to get into the weeds on anything. Just get out and say, rah, rah, be sure to vote and tell them when election day was. And that's how we got trapped and snookered. Thank you everyone on this call. So I want to talk about how John Brakey, um, who I don't see in his thing, but uh, the ballot image aspect of what we're doing is what's going to go the day after. Because if anybody says the count is wrong, it was all hacked, the ballot images are what prove that the count was accurate on the computers. And yes, mail ballots are going to make many more hand counted paper ballots around, but we don't hand count them and they never want to hand count them. So these ballot images, it's just a ballot image file. Jamie Raskin of the House Administration Committee, he is the chairman, has said to me that he will try to use the power 
of the House Administration Committee, which oversees the EAC, the Election Assistance Commission. Yes, it's a federal commission, nothing federal works under Trump, but the House Admin Committee does have oversight. And Jamie, as chair, can ask the committee to vote to send a letter to the EAC saying, Dear EAC, please remind all election officials in the United States that the pre-digital law saying save federal election records and papers includes digital records. It's implied under records, spirit of the law and letter of the law. He wants to do this. So I've looked at the House Admin Committee. What can we do, people on this call? G.K. Butterfield, is the Democrat from North Carolina. Send him an email or call him up and say, your House Admin Committee position can help Chairman Raskin save ballot images so that we're not in the streets having a war about what the results of the election are. And I'm telling you right now, as John has told you, election officials are destroying the ballot images. They make them and they destroy them because they don't want any proof of whatever might be done or has been done. So G.K. Butterfield, North Carolina, the Republican, Mark Walker from North Carolina. Does he want a civil war in the streets? I don't think so. He just wants to be reelected maybe. So tell him, you're on House Admin Committee, support Chairman Raskin's request that the EAC remind all the election officials, save the ballot images, their digital records, that's implied in the law, US law. There is also Pete Aguilar of California, Susan Davis of California, Zoe Lofgren of California, Rodney Davis of Illinois, and Barry Loudermilk of Georgia. I can't think of any one of those House representative members that want to have people shooting each other about whether they won or lost their election and election records are digital now. It's just the laws were written before computers, but implied is records, digital records. So that's a kind of a bathroom moment federally. That is something we can do, and it only involves a handful of people. Get in touch with them before Friday and tell them, I want this supported. Ballot images must be saved and the EAC has to do it, and you rule oversight of the EAC. Yes. That's a pressure point, and it's a good one. And we have it right now, and the chairman wants to do it. So uh, I put it in the chat who those all were. I will list them again if you want, and I will list the issue if you want. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, we're almost out of time. This has been a spectacular call. Um, uh, we, we, we've learned from North Carolina and in Arizona and Michigan and Pennsylvania now that grassroots stuff is really happening and is really working. And, uh, you know, we need to know ballot applications. Uh, and, and we have an incredible challenge in Ohio. So um, um, uh, we're on the ground. We will meet again this time next week. We had talked about doing a election um, uh, a webinar on Thursday, but another group um, is staging a major event. Uh, we will send you the links to that on Thursday and Friday. So it will be another week that we'll do a webinar on the web. But we will meet again, same time, same place. Uh, next week, we got up to 99 people on this one. We're still at 90. Um, um, I wanna call real quickly on Jennifer and then Ruth, um, and, and, and um, Jennifer Tanner and then Ruth Strauss. Uh, can we go real quick? And we can keep it under uh, 90 minutes. Uh, well, actually, we, get, we can go to 6.35 because we, started five, we always start five minutes late. But real quickly, uh, Jennifer Tanner and then Ruth Strauss. Can you hear me? Yes, Jennifer, go ahead. Yeah. You're, so you're Mimi, in Los Angeles. Yeah, Mimi, what you were talking about is really excellent. And what I found that's really useful for people is if you write it out for them, if you put it out like an action script and you name the people that we need to call, then I can do something and share that with all the indivisible groups that have to do with those legislators. But I need something written out. I couldn't write my notes of all the things you said so quickly. So can you please do that? Or send that out to me and I'll, 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 I'll spread the word with Indivisible. That's All great. Right. I'll send it to you. That okay. would be so, Also to mention, we have Indivisible. We haven't heard from Sunrise. We haven't heard from our revolution. We have heard from Progressive Democrats of America. We've got to get, the, you know, the, old, the Bernie network is there. We've got to get these people on the ground. I mean, look at the incredible impact the people had in Pennsylvania and North Carolina and Arizona already. I mean, what we've already done could change the election. 
And we know what to do now. We got 90 days, we got 90 people. That's more than enough. Okay, um, uh, Dr. Ruth uh, in LA, you wanted to say, Jennifer, is there more from you? No, I'm gonna just, uh, Mimi, I'm gonna send you my email so you can just respond to that. Yes, we need, we need to reach out to Bernie's people. People in Michigan, we gotta get to Michael Moore. Um, uh, our revolution has been absent on this. We really need them. Sunrise, Nina Turner, we need her. Uh, we, we, um, uh, on, Adam Broad is on the board of our L L Illinois Revolution. We need to people, have these people on the calls like Joel has been today and like John Brakey and all you folks from the grassroots. Dr. Ruth, what do you got? Dr. Ruth Strauss in, L in LA. Hello? Um, okay, I, I'm not, I'm, we're having a technical problem with Dr. Ruth. So um, um, if, if we get, does anyone else have a hand that wanted to say something before we disappear? I got a question. Joel, please. Yeah, if, if we can, if everyone in the next call can try to bring two, two, two colleagues, we, we need everyone here to be in this movement, but we want to increase the number of African Americans, Latinos, Asian Pacific Americans, East Indians. That's why I wanted Willie Fleming to talk about that. But please, let's reach out to, you know, the international community. That's all. But uh, I want to thank you, Harvey, for just you're one incredible leader and a lot of fun to work with. Well, uh, I like the fun part. Uh, but listen, this is we've got it. We, we've seen now, you know, we had 13 uh, uh, 90 minute calls going through the basics of the elections. Now we're getting the actual groups on the ground. So um, uh, Indivisible, we heard from you. We, we need Indivisible people on the ground. We're thrilled to see the people on the ground in Allegheny County, fantastic. John in Arizona. Uh, Charlotte, you have a hand real quick. Charlotte? Yeah. Go ahead. I'm mute. Um, can you, am I muted? No, you're not. Oh, so I'm, in, I'm in Vermont. So uh, I'll be one of the people to call uh, the Bernie folks about getting them involved. And the only other thing I want to say is that um, I'm interviewing Greg Palace tomorrow, and I will bring up some of the wonderful stuff I've heard today. Great. And since you're in Vermont, uh, Ben and Jerry's, Ben and Jerry are old friends of mine. So if you can get them to donate ice cream, uh, that would be very helpful. But they're very close to Bernie. And, uh, you know, we need that network. Every uh, ice network. Cream, ice cream where? <laughs> Every state, you mean? <laughs> Every state, yes. Uh, um, um, and we need, we need these networks now. This is the phase we're in now. We've right. got the organization. I, again, I, if you did not get the PDF of the handbook that I've written, email me and I will mail it back to you. I will read every comment from you. I hope to have a finished version for next week and we can send it everywhere. Okay, it's, it's only 20 pages and it's simple and I'll have an easy executive summary up front. Okay, so as Joel said, please bring more people next week and bring networks. That will, that's what we need. And remember, we know now for sure that this action on the ground makes a difference. I mean, the, what, what's been done in, in Allegheny County alone could change the election. So we need people in, or, in Ohio and Michigan and everywhere else. Anybody else got anything they want to say before we sign off for another week? We will be back again, same time, same place next week. Thank you, Mike Hirsch, for, uh, for engineering this. And I must say that the average age, we may, we may not be eligible anymore for AARP. The average age has dropped. We'd like to see that. Please bring more people on as well. Okay, we're good. My first thing. Yes. Harvey, one quick question. There, we weren't able to get to everybody's questions today. We will be back next week. And uh, Harvey, can they email you with any questions they have? Oh, absolutely. Please do. Uh, email me and Joel and Mike. Whatever you missed today, we will get next week. And, and whoever has a network, let me know, and we, they will talk next week. We are looking for those grassroots networks, okay? All right, everybody, thank you so much. Thank you, Mike. We'll see you next week, same time, same place, and maybe even the same country. <laughs> that's, what we're, that's what we're most concerned about. <laughs>